Russia shocked the European community by halting gas supplies to Poland and Bulgaria on Wednesday because they had refused to pay for the gas in Russian rubles uh, as Moscow demanded. And now Russia's President Vladimir Putin has warned the West of a lightning fast response to any country intervening in the Ukraine war and creating strategic threats for Russia. There is more in this report. Speaking to members of the Council of Lawmakers at the Federation Council of the Russian Federation in St. Petersburg, Russian President Vladimir Putin accused the West of wanting to cut Russia up into different pieces, as well as economically strangle the country. If anyone intends to intervene from the outside and create a strategic threat to Russia, that is unacceptable to us. They should know that our retaliatory strikes will be lightning fast. We have the tools we need for this, the likes of which no one else can claim at this point. We will not just brag. We will use them if necessary, and I want everyone to know this. We have made all the decisions on this matter. Elsewhere, Austrian Federal Chancellor Karl Nemaha says Austria will continue to pay for Russian gas deliveries in euros. He made the revelation shortly after the Russian state-owned gas agency Gazprom announced a ban on gas supplies to Poland and Bulgaria over refusal to pay in Russian currency. The Austrian federal chancellor took to Twitter and slammed reports claiming Austria decided to shift in the mood of payment for Russian gas. Meanwhile, Germany has further reduced its dependence on Russian natural gas. While the share of Russian supplies was 55% last year, it has now fallen to 35% this year, according to Economics Minister Robert Haberg. According to reports, in March, this figure was still at 40% for the country. Away from Germany, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg held a press conference with the President of the European Parliament, Roberta Metzola, and attended a meeting with the Conference of Presidents of the European Parliament in Brussels on Thursday. The Secretary General and the President of the Parliament will now hold a joint doorstep press point at the political entrance of the European Parliament later on Thursday. This, of course, for Finland and Sweden to decide whether they uh, would like to apply for a membership uh, in NATO or not. But if they decide to apply, Finland and Sweden will be welcomed with open arms uh, to NATO. We will continue to call for further um, uh, sanctions and we will continue to call for the enforcement of the current packages of sanctions in a better way and more effective way. This we will continue also to discuss in Strasbourg next week. But in our case, this parliament will continue to build on the momentum of this, again, unprecedented coordination that we have. In Ukraine, the people of occupied Kherson, despite the risks for their lives, have protested, declaring again that Kherson is under Ukraine's leadership. The city has been under temporary occupation for two months and the occupiers announced the intention to hold a so-called referendum and make Kherson the People's Republic. According to reports, Russian occupants had used noise grenades and spread gas to make the people break up. Still in Ukraine, residents in Kharkiv are struggling to survive while hiding from the frequent bomb strikes. In these areas, people seek refuge in their basement where there is barely any space to sit sleep or move around. The two-month-long bombardment of Kharkiv has taken a heavy toll on the residents and population. Now let's talk more on dates by speaking with a security expert, Kachin Onoju, who is joining me live from Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us on World Now. President uh, Vladimir Putin has threatened fire and brim brimstone for any country that will interfere in the Russia uh, the, the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. And then he said that such will face a lightning fast response. What is the implication of this? Well, as we've all watched and we're all watching, uh, this crisis is entering a very dangerous stage. Uh, Russia has said it is willing to use its nuclear weapon if it is threatened. Mm -hmm. I think this is time when the Americans should cool down and agree to go to negotiations. 
by publicly saying that the reasons why they are urging Ukraine to fight on is simply to weaken Russia. That simply publicly gives out a very bad signal. I don't think that is in the interest of Europe. You've seen yesterday, Russia has now weaponized its ownership of gas and insisted that everybody pays in rubles. Hungary has agreed to do that today. Uh, uh, UNAPA, a German energy company, has agreed to find a way. At the end of the day, it's better we stop the world now than trying to drag it along. I'm trying, even in doing that, getting to suffer people inside continental Europe simply as a way to make sanctions work. But they're not working right now. The sanctions are not working because they're not able to stop the Russian war machine from sustaining its activities as it calls it special operations in Ukraine. We need to sit down now and start talking about peace. Well, Russia has actually found it very difficult to capture or at least retain a stronghold of a particular territory in Ukraine since they launched this attack. But then, because they've met with, uh, you know, a strict resistance from the Ukrainians based on the fact that they, the Ukrainians are so patriotic and they, oh, they no, actually no. made sure that they want to... <laughs> Mr. Cash, I'm not sure if you can hear me now. Now let's go back to our earlier conversation with a security expert, Kaj Nonaju, who've been talking about the Russia-Ukraine war and the latest utterance by the uh, president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. It's good to have you back, uh, Mr. Kaj. Uh, Russia, I was going to ask you that um, Russia has found it very difficult to capture or at least retain a stronghold of any territory where the uh, stiff resistance they met in Ukraine. Does it have the strength to expand its weaponry in attack against an interfering country in the ongoing war. I was telling you that don't believe all the propaganda you've heard. The important thing, Russia has taken Mariupol. Mariupol provides Russia a chance to build a corridor that links the Donbass region with uh, the port of Sevastopol. So once you can link using Mariupol, linking Donbass with Crimea. Uh, that's one objective that it's met. And you know, if they drive further to get to as far as Odessa, what that means is cutting Ukraine out from the sea, from both the Black Sea and the Azov Sea. So I think they are getting somewhere very, very seriously. Don't also forget, yesterday for the very first time, Ukraine admitted that it is losing a lot of towns in eastern Ukraine. So I don't want us to start repeating the propaganda. No, Russia is doing quite a lot. And people are dying. Civilians are suffering. So anybody who tells you it is not gaining territory, taking towns, that person is lying. If that is true, as they want us to believe, how come the people who are holed up in the steel plant in Mariupol are begging that they should be allowed out in a humane way. That simply tells you Mariupol has been taken and the only holdout is the underground bunker right there at the steel plant. I don't want to get myself that. I believe the Russians are doing something really terrible and that is the scorch head policy. So if anybody tells you they are not succeeding. That person is simply lying to you and playing propaganda. The earlier we can get some quality of talk between the two sides, the better. The idea of trying to tell Ukraine to hang on there, and what can they do? They can protect themselves from the air. They do not have the artillery. Don't forget, this war is an artillery heavy war. And if you don't have the artillery to match to the artillery capabilities of the Russia, you cannot stop them from gaining the territories that they right now are gaining. Don't listen to the propaganda, please. Well, um, as a matter of fact, the European Commission has accused Russia of blackmail after you know, Moscow caught of gas exports to Poland and Bulgaria, which makes the EU president to say Russia is unreliable to say Russia... Uh, it's to say Russia is unreliable as a supplier. What do you make of this then? Well, if you're saying Russia is unreliable, 
it, it's, a, it's an issue of buy and sell. The buyer is now telling you that because of the sanctions upon me, I want you to pay me in my local currency. It's not an impossible thing to do. It's very simple. Look at the argument about the payment. You go there, you deposit euro, and if you deposit through euro, the bank will help you do the conversion to rubles, and that will be supplied. But simply because of some people do not want anything to go against the long-established dollar advantage, they tell you Russia is not unreliable. How is it not unreliable? Have you come to buy and bring your money and they say they won't pay you? No. You made sanctions and say, don't trade. If I'm going to sell you something and you agree, you say, how much do I want to buy? I say, I want you to do this. How do you want to pay? It is the always the seller that sets out set payment term. It's never ever the buyer in any transaction that sets out the payment term. The seller will set out how he wants to be paid. You want to pay, you do. Yesterday, Hungary said they are doing. Today, some parts of Germany, companies in Germany said they would do that. So I don't see how you can stop paying the buyer if you want the goods that the buyer gives you. It's not true to say they are unreliable, no. It does not have to exist only on their own terms. Simply, if you want to oh. buy gas, you buy. If you have the money to buy the gas and you have it, the man is simply telling you, before I supply it to you, convert whatever money you have into my currency, which was what we do. When we go to buy equipment internationally, we convert the money, the Naira we have from our banks into the currency that the man who is selling wants to receive it in. Whether it's in, it's, in, it's, in, it's in dollars, it's in euro, it's in pounds, we do that. So I really do not see where it becomes so difficult. If it is not difficult for Hungary to do, if it is not difficult for the companies in Germany, in Germany that said yesterday to try to find ways to buy that gas, it should not be difficult for Finland. It should not be difficult for any other country in Europe to All right. find the money pay into the bank and have the yeah. conversion done into rubles. Even though we continue to monitor the situation of Russia invasion in Ukraine, uh, it's not a good thing to see people you know, being killed in the process of whatever end game Russia is really after. Well then, thank you very kindly, security expert Kashin Thank you so much for your time and insight.